Alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back to this VY one tonner build. Now, it's been a long time between episodes. We filmed the first episode and we pulled this motor down. And we had everything ready to go and it has been a saga since then, let me tell you. So, apologies for the long gap between episodes. Um, but, so pretty much what happened is we tore down the block, uh, as you saw in the last episode. We tore everything down. Everything was all sweet. Uh, we're usually always very careful to check the deck surfaces of blocks when we pull them down, just to check for cracks and anything else that may be there. You know, it, it is often that you do get damage from decks and that, so we always do check. Uh, we then ordered our parts, our rotating assembly. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, long story short, we will never deal with Mace Engineering again. Uh, so that was an ordeal. So we ended up going with some comp star rods, um, which were supplied by a different supplier. We've got some CP pistons there. We had everything here ready to go. Everything was sweet. So that was about four weeks. We actually, to the point where we actually managed to get the stuff to send it to the machine shop. Now we sent it to the machine shop and the block that we had pulled down was damaged. It was cracked, but it wasn't cracked on the deck. Uh, for anyone that knows anything about LSs, they actually have what we call a blind head bolt, which means they, the head bolt hole bottoms out. It's cast into the block and it bottoms out. So if you have a fluid, in the bottom of the hole, whether it be you know some, some oil or a bit of water or something, if the hole's not clean and you try and torque a head bolt down into it, as we know, uh, fluids don't really compress and it popped out the side of the out the side of the block. So it was a big crack, it was no good. Uh, so we had another block in a container. Um, it, it wasn't ours, we never pulled it down. Um, we, we got it as a bare block, it was given to us, and it had a no, sorry, I was wrong. The first one we sent down was the purple motor that we pulled down and I used most of that top end for my LS1 uh, for my drift car. Uh, it had dropped the valve and split a piston and had it split a ball liner. So we sent it down to get re-sleeved and we figured that would work out. Uh, but it turned out when we got that block x-rated it actually cracked uh, not only the liner but the, the alloy behind the liner in the bore. So uh, another one of those blocks where we could get it fixed and it'd probably be good for a really mild street application but no good for something like this. Uh, as far as a, you know, a 383 stroke that we want to push some power out of. So, we got that block back. We had another block in the container that we were given with a damaged lifter ball. We never pulled it down. Uh, we didn't really think much to check over it. We thought, oh, we'll send it down, get them to fix the lifter ball, uh, and that'll be fine. Now, then we got a call back. They fixed the lifter ball, but uh, that block actually did have some cracking in the deck. Uh, same thing, where pretty pretty good for a you know mild build, maybe. Um, but no good for something like this 383. So that was block number three. <laughs> that was uh, damage that we couldn't use. So we got that block back. We sent down our last very good block. We were trying to not use, because we were trying to keep this block aside for, um, we knew it was a really good block. We were trying to keep it for ourselves, but we worked out a deal with the customer and we're gonna sell them our good block. And uh, so we sent it down, finally had a block that they could use. However, the rods that we bought from Mace that we waited for so long for, uh, it turns out they'd sent the wrong rod bolts. Um, so then we had to try and get Mace to send the right rod bolts, and that was a saga in itself. Two weeks went past there, and we just ended up sick of dealing with it. We went and bought some Comstar rods, uh, and we finally got this thing balanced, and we finally got it back, and now we're finally getting back into doing the build. So, apologies for the lengthy explanation, but now you know why it was so long between episodes. So anyway, here we are. We've got 383, we've got the block, everything's balanced, everything's ready to go. Uh, we are ready to start doing some assembly. So Rex actually already started on this block yesterday. Uh, he started cleaning it up and changing out all the Welsh plugs. Uh, we'll call them Welsh plugs, but obviously on an LS most of them, they're all threaded. So these are all the old ones. They've all been replaced with newies. The kit also includes uh, one of these new barbells. Um, they, it's pretty important to replace these when you're doing an LS build from, from start to finish. Uh, obviously, especially with the machining process of cleaning the block. So, uh, And the one that we replaced it with is actually a billet or alloy alloy unit not a plastic one like from factory so we've got our comstar rods our 383 crank we've got our cp pistons we've got our arp hardware uh it's been balanced with the balancer and everything else we've got our proflow intake manifold and we are ready to start doing some bearing clearances for the bottom end as it currently stands at the moment, we are still waiting for our CNC 241 heads to get back from the machine shop. Uh, they are not far away. We should hopefully have them within the next two weeks. So this shouldn't drag on for too much longer, but uh, as you can see, we're getting there. We also had the machine shop install some new cam bearings. So this thing's pretty much ready to go. We've also got a new 
flex plate in there obviously to adapt our turbo 400 we've got our turbo 400 here this is a street uh turbo 400 box built by danny there at lunatech transmissions he's an absolute champion he calls that his um hot rod hot rod, hot rod box, box. Essentially rated to 500 horsepower, so a fairly mild turbo 400, very well priced, uh, you know, a really good uh, budget budget option for what we're doing with this car. You know, you can step up, obviously it does boxes all the way up to sort of, you know, whatever you want, whatever your needs are, uh, trans brake or whatever, but we just opted for the, the hot rod box for what this thing's going to be for now, um, it's the best way to go about it. Uh, and we've also got a red diamond converter there. Uh, which we actually sold to the customer um, so that's going to go in that's about 2800 rpm converter so that's actually one of rex's old converters um really good converter we've had it sitting around for ages because uh, rex just needed to go to a bigger one when he put a 200 shot on the small block in the one tonner that one was flaring up that was you know 600 plus horsepower though um so he had to change that out but that's been sitting there for ages we didn't have a use for it we needed one for this project so we said hey matt you want to buy this one um did him a deal nice and cheap better than it sitting around here. So we've got our box, uh, we've got the shifter plate, everything ready to go into this VY, everything's here. So it's time to start, well, obviously, except for the heads. Uh, it's time to get this thing together so that we can, you know, then work out our tail shaft and everything else we need to do. And we'll be on our way with this thing. And we're pretty excited to see how it's gonna go. Anyway, guys, Rex is planning on doing a bit of night shift tonight and starting on these bearing clearances. So I thought I would get in and do a little bit of an intro before he starts because I haven't actually filmed anything for this thing as of yet. Uh, so I'm gonna dip. We'll pick this back up in the morning and hopefully by then Rex has got a fair few of the bearing clearances sorted and uh, we can start actually assembling this bottom end and have it ready for our heads when they get back. Righto guys, so Rex started doing some bearing clearances yesterday, or last night I should say, as you saw from the last clip. Uh, he actually found that the rod bearings were actually a little bit on the loose side, so we've decided to go with a, what we're going to go with one undersized shell and one regular shell. Uh, that'll just get us that extra sort of half thou of, uh, or one half thou less of clearance I should say. Uh, gets us just a little bit tighter on the, on the bearing clearances to where we want them on the rods, uh, but apart from that, we're pretty well good to go. So once again, Rex is gonna put in another bit of a night shift tonight, probably start getting this thing uh, assembled some of it. Uh, so I figured I'd, I'd film this little update as well, uh, just to give you, keep it just updated as we go. So my apologies for not being able to actually film this motor go together, or this engine go together, I should say. Uh, but obviously uh, we gotta get stuff done and Rex has gotta work, you know, late, late hours and stuff, and I've got a family to go home to. So it is what it is. But you get a good picture of what's going on. So everything's looking great. Really good. Glad we could find. We we had a bit of a debacle because at the moment, no one can really get Clevite bearings. We were lucky to actually get our set of Clevite bearings for this thing. Uh, we're big fans of Clevite bearings. We try and use them in just about everything we build. And we knew we had a set of uh, one mil undersize around somewhere. Uh, we did happen to find them, which is good because <laughs> it means we don't have to go try hunting for another set of bearings. So. Glad we found them so we can get this together with the bearing tolerances that we uh, we really want it to be. And uh, this thing should be a beautiful little motor. So we'll uh, we'll check back in tomorrow. Righto guys, another quick update between Rex's night shifts. Once again, I apologize, but I'll keep you up to date at the very least. So we've got our rotating assembly here. Uh, they are numbered, ready to go. Wire locks installed, pins, you know, ready to rumble. Uh, with our one half bearing shell, we managed to get these rod clearances uh, at a much more favorable sort of area um, and we're pretty happy to start assembling on this very very soon next thing now is our ring gap which uh, Rex will be starting on tonight uh, again I won't be here but I'll keep you up to date so we'll gap up our rings and then it's ready to start putting this bottom end together which is awesome because uh, fingers crossed we can get this together this week and then hopefully our heads will be here next week and it'll be uh, party time for this thing I know these little updates seem like really small and not very important but a lot of this this part of the the process and blueprinting and that is is very time consuming so uh to, you know by all means don't denounce this sort of progress um this is yeah very time consuming it's a very big progress to be at the point where all the bearing clearances are done and and uh after tonight where the ring gaps are done that's bottom end most of the time consuming parts of the bottom end ready to go so anyway guys i'll uh i'll update you again in the morning
All right, guys, once again, I apologize for the start of this episode being pretty patchy and blotchy and I wasn't really around for a little bit, but I'm gonna stay out here tonight, gonna have a bit of a workshop sleepover, and we're gonna get into this thing and get a bit of it uh, mostly assembled. Um, so I'll be here to film most of the actual assembly, which is nice. Anyway, Rex got the rings all gapped up. So our rings are gapped, ready to go. Our bearing clearances are all done. Uh, so this bottom end is pretty much now ready for assembly as it sits, which is some exciting stuff. Another very exciting development is that we've actually got our heads back for this motor. So we finally got these back from our porter yesterday. So these are some CNC ported 241s. So we've been friends with our head porter for quite a long time. We've got a really good relationship with him and he has a lot of confidence in his CNC program for these heads. He's flow tested these ones and they've come up really, really nice. Uh, we've got like 290 CFM by 650 lift. So uh, yeah, really, really good results as far as the flow test go. They keep holding on all the way up to, you know, 800 lift, they keep holding on, they don't back up. So very, very impressive with the, the actual flow test results. So we're super excited to get these on the 383 and see how they actual, actually perform uh, real, in real world. So beautiful, all CNC ports, CNC chambers. Uh, we also had these decked 10 thou, so should be a very, very nice little combo. So we actually worked out that with these pistons, uh, even without decking them, it was going to be around sort of that 10.5 to 11 to 1 comp, um, depending on how the, the chamber CNC, how much that takes out. So uh, we decided to only deck 10 thou off them because we assume it's going to be probably up just over 11 to 1 comp static. Uh, so we didn't want to go decking too much off them because we'll end up with too much uh, compression and uh, the owner is still talking about potentially supercharging this thing one day. So we don't want too much comp in it. 11 to 1 is going to be perfect. It's going to be a really nice strong NA and uh, still enough to, to put a little bit of boost in it. Um, should be fine. So. so along with the port work, we've also got our three angle valve job. So yeah, as far as our 383 big stroke, these heads should complement it really well with our ProFlow manifold there. Should be a nice big heavy breathing combo and be very, very cranky with the stick that's going in it. Anyway guys, that's enough babble. Now you know exactly what the combo is going together. So we'll start getting this together. Rex has actually already set the thrust as well. Um, so our end play, our crank float, you'd say. Uh, so that's all been set as well. So it's literally everything's been set, done, recorded. It's just ready to bolt together now. And uh, obviously I've got to assemble the heads, but We'll go, let's go. We actually did get another set of 241s done as well, which is for another upcoming job. Uh, we actually got them decked a bit more and they're going just on a stock stroke LS1. So that'll be a really good indication of uh, the performance of these heads because it'll be on a stock stroke LS1. So we're pretty excited for that too. So just doing some checks for our install heights and uh, working out some seat pressure based on our install heights which are a little bit out from uh, what they specify they want them uh, from, from Crow. Uh, but in doing so, we've worked out a few seat pressure uh, sort of things at certain valve lift. And with the can that we're using, uh, not only are we going to obviously order shims to get our install height properly, but we've decided to actually probably go to uh, the, the heavier double spring. Uh, so. These are like your sort of your entry, double spring. They're pretty good for most applications. That being said, the, the cam that's going in this thing is very, very 
pretty like it's, it's pretty cranky so um, given what we've worked out as far as our seat pressure at you know 500 lift etc we've decided to go to the heavier spring anyway um, and we're going to order some shims so that we can actually get this thing to the correct install height because obviously being that it's it's had its valve um, valve angle job and everything else it's it's cut into the seat a bit more these valves are you know the install heights a bit more than it should be from stock so that's the development on on that at the moment but we're going to wait until we order them uh, to get this bottom end together and just do a measurement and see what size push rods we need because we still haven't figured out uh, what size push rods we're going to have to run in this thing so we'll wait until we measure that up we'll do another order get our upgraded springs some shims and the right push rods for this combo make sure she's all mickey mouse because yeah this cam i don't think i've talked to you about what cam this is so we might talk about that so we're actually uh using a cam tech cam in this combo we ended up going cam tech because we wanted to get a, a custom ground sort of cam um we had our own ideas for what sort of grind we wanted to run uh with these heads and this 383 combo so we ended up getting this ground this is a 246 252 on a 113 uh at six about 620 lift so uh the reason we still got it on a 113 is because the owner is still talking about potentially supercharging this combo later on down the track so we wanted to get a ground on a lobe separation that was sort of going to work well na but still be all right for a supercharger maybe down the road um if he was definitely just going to stay in a we would probably tighten that lobe up a little bit but uh yeah 246 252 she's a pretty cranky cranky little camp so it's going to be a wild little combo though. anyway from here we just got to get this bottom end together so that we can actually do our measurements for our push rods and we'll do another order from from crow in the morning So moving along with this thing one thing i haven't shown you yet i talked about how uh the first block we sent down the machine shop was actually cracked out the side of the block uh because the head bolt holes are blind now what i didn't show you was our repair of that block um so as i talked about we ended up sending one of our personal blocks down there to exchange um just trying to help out the customer as much as we can what we did was uh that block that was windowed out the side we actually got it back and uh, you'll see a lot more of it uh, when we actually do the S13 build. But what we've done here is actually we windowed it out where it was cracked. We installed a TD42, we believe, head stud. It's just an ARP stud that we had lying around in the, in the stock room to use. So we windowed that out. Rex drilled that. Uh, he sort of cut some flutes in the end of it to make it almost like a tap. And uh, pretty much wound it all down into the bottom of the head bolt hole. 
What we did then was uh, with the with the MIG, we actually welded a few steel dams around the uh, the head stud there, and then with the TIG, we actually just filled in all the alloy around it. So it's almost like it's got a few dams there, so that it can't pull out of the actual block, and then welded alloy all around it. And Rex has tried this, and he's actually put it down to 120 foot pounds, and it's held up. Uh, which would lead us to believe that uh, it should be fine for some actual combustion sort of pressure on a head. The stock uh, LS1 head bolts do down to what, 85 foot pound? 85? Oh, work okay. out, it's about 80 by the time you do your... Yeah, your yeah, your 60 and then 90 and 90 or whatever it is. Um, 90. So yeah, by the time you got your angular torque on it, Rex reckons it's about 85. So we figure at 120, if it's still holding up, then it should be um, plenty to hold it down as well as for you know, actual cylinder pressure. So we're gonna use that for the drift car. Again, it's another one of those things where it's ours, it's our personal thing. Uh, we know the risk that we're taking and if it lets go, we're the ones that gotta pick up the pieces. So you could never do something like that for a customer, which is why we decided to trade, sort of work out a deal and trade the customer our good block for that one. And uh, we'll run the gauntlet with the, the, uh, the dodgy fix block. But anyway, that should work out pretty well for us for our S13. And this is gonna be coming together for the 383. Righto guys, so it's getting pretty late at the moment. Uh, it's about quarter to 10, so we've been at this since like four o'clock this afternoon, so it's getting pretty late, we're getting pretty tired. Uh, but we've managed to get the bottom end mostly together uh, to the point where we've been able to do all of the critical measurements we really wanted to do tonight. Uh, we've found that a standard length push rod is gonna be fine. We get about 50 thou preload on a standard length push rod, so we're gonna order some probably 80 thou wall standard length push rods. Uh, we go to a decent wall with the push rods for this sort of thing because we're using such a, a big cam and we are talking about going to a, a valve spring that's got a lot more seat pressure. You're starting to load up that, that uh, push rod a lot. So pretty important to go to some decent walled uh, push rods for something of this caliber. We've checked our piston to valve clearance. We've got no issues there. We've got plenty of piston to valve clearance. Uh, we actually checked the piston to deck as well. Uh, and it's zero, which is good because that that's what we actually uh, worked out our static compression ratio. Uh, was with the piston to deck and zero. So we're still yet to CC a chamber. We're gonna probably do that now, just before we go to bed, just to double check what our compression ratio is gonna be, but it's gonna be somewhere in that 11, 11 to 11, five. Uh, so it'll be a pretty cranky little thing with this cam, that sort of compression and being 383 and these heads, it's gonna be a good little combo. So degreeing in this cam, we found it to be 
fairly consistently one degree retarded. Uh, it's, it's bang on top dead, exactly what it should be. The issue we've had is that the cam tech, the way they do their cam cards is a bit different to any other sort of cam company that we're used to using. Uh, so we've had to sort of adjust how we would normally measure uh, or degree of cam in. Uh, so it's, it's not been that bad, it's just it's taken us a while and we've been double, triple, quadruple checking everything to make sure we're doing everything properly. Um, being that it's, it's bang on at top dead and it's only about one degree out, we're not going to bother chasing our tails with it. Uh, we believe it's going to be all sweet. So uh, cam's pretty much degreed in, piston and the valve's good, deck height's done. All we're going to do now is CC ahead, we'll work out our static compression ratio um, and then that's going to be pretty much it and then we'll wait for our parts to get here and continue putting this thing together. So we've just CNC'd this chamber. It's come out at about 68 cc's. Uh, so based on our calculations and based on the domes on the pistons that we installed in the motor, at uh, zero piston to deck height, this should give us about 10.8 to one comp, uh, which is pretty good. That's pretty bang on. As far as something that's gonna perform well NA, yet still be all right for a supercharger potentially down the road, we can't ask for much more than that. That's 10.8 is pretty good. So we're pretty happy with that. That's a pretty good result. Um, this, this combo is going to be a nice little strong combo and it should still respond well to boost down the track if the owner chooses to go that way. So uh, everything's well and good in the world. All right, so Rex has just done the final calculation based on that chamber size and we're 10.74 to one. So 10.74. So that's, yeah, like like I was just saying, that's, that's a pretty favorable compression ratio for what we want to do with this combo. So we're pretty happy with that. That's going to be good. This is going to be a really, really good little cranky little 383 so that's awesome anyway we're super tired we're gonna go to bed and we're gonna get up in the morning and probably continue getting this together but i may can this episode here we'll start another episode tomorrow so tune in for the next episode we'll be finishing getting this bottom end together hopefully get the top end together very soon when we get our parts um, but yeah, we're very excited to get this thing in the car and get it happening. So thanks for watching. As always, smash like, smash subscribe, head to the website, buy yourself something nice, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out. See you. Bye.